Ugreen is a fairly well-known household name when it comes to chargers and cables and such, but to my knowledge they haven't tackled power stations before, or solar, so it's always good to see some innovative competition in this space. Today we're taking a look at the new Ugreen Power Roam 1200, combined with two of their SC200 solar panels. And I've got to say, I'm impressed both in terms of performance and value, but with a few niggles. I will tell you right now that these are my new favourite portable solar panels. Keep watching to find out why. And the Power Roam 1200 isn't bad either. I'm James Bruce, you're watching MakeUseOf.com Reviews, and I've reviewed far more portable batteries than I care to count for the past decade or so now, so I have all manner of solar systems and other renewable energy in my house. You can trust my opinion whether you're looking for something for caravanning, camping, off-grid use, or just for emergencies. So first up, the Power Roam 1200. My first and only complaint with this is the name, actually. Most manufacturers name their device models after the capacity, so if you put 1200 in the name, I'd expect around 1200 watt hours of capacity. Not so in this case, and it feels a little bit deceptive. In fact, 1200 is the total power output possible, 1200 watts, while the capacity is slightly smaller at 1024 watt hours. Now that's still a respectable amount of power by any measure, but it does make it a little harder for less knowledgeable consumers to compare batteries. Now, since we're talking about specs anyway, I'll also mention that the surge output is an impressive 3000 watts, and the continuous 1200 watts should be enough for a travel kettle or most household appliances, just not a full-size kettle. It was more than enough for my induction hob. We were able to cook off this just fine, so I'm happy there. In terms of output, you'll find two AC sockets around the side here, and standard 12 volt DC 2251 and car socket here. For USB, we have an impressive 200 watt USB-C PD and two USB-A ports running it up to 22.5 watts, which is excellent. Typically those will only go up to 18 watts, so that's a bit of extra juice uh, where you can make use of it. Now in my experience, most portable batteries only have uh, a single USB-C PD port, so that also is pretty generous. And I think given the 1200 watt limit or turbo mode for one appliance, two AC ports is more than enough on a battery of this size. Also, just to note that the USB ports don't need to be turned on. They're automatically activated with the unit. It's the DC button controls only the DC section here. So no worries about plugging your phone in and then accidentally forgetting to turn on the charger. Uh, it'll be on as long as the whole power station is on. The only downside is you won't find a Qi wireless charger anywhere on this unit uh, if that's important to you. As for size and weight, at 340 by 220 by 270 millimeters, and 11 kilograms or 13.4 by 8.7 by 10.6 inches and 25.4 pounds. This is about as compact and lightweight as you can expect from this capacity battery. The Jackery Explorer Pro 1000, for instance, is exactly the same weight and ever so slightly larger. You will find 1000 watt hour batteries under 10 kilograms. However, those use lithium ion rather than lithium ion phosphate cells, which is what you'll find in here. Now, lithium ion, has a significantly reduced lifespan, around 500 full cycles compared to 3,000 cycles on this uh, before you reach degradation of about 80%. Either way, you can comfortably carry this in one hand, uh, but obviously not very far because 11 kilograms is still pretty unwieldy. And the handle is fixed, which for stowing it in the trunk of your car can be a little bit annoying. It would be better if that folded over, but it's not a huge deal. As for design, as you can see, it's quite demure, with no bawdy sort of orange colouring or anything like that. It's just dark and light grey. Also worth mentioning is that you get a handy cable carry case for the AC adapter car cable, XT60Y splitter, and DC to DC cabling, which is provided. So pretty generous on that front as well. Now, in terms of charging for AC, you just need a standard IEC cable, and you can get up to 80% of the capacity in one and a half hours. This is something they tout on their sales page as being quite remarkable technology that they call PowerZip, but actually that works out at around 500 watts charge rate and isn't really that remarkable. I've seen charge rates up to 2400 watts on other batteries, uh, albeit bigger ones. It's not bad by any means, but it's certainly not something I would give a special name to and claim to be 5.3 times faster than everyone else. That may have been true of the last generation of portable batteries, but it's nothing special nowadays. 
There's no external power brick, but that's great both in terms of less accessories to lose and for overall convenience. It's not magic though, just means the power brick is integrated into the unit, making it ever so slightly heavier than competitors which don't do that, but only by a tiny margin. Finally, it has IoT connectivity and an app to go with it. The easiest control method is Bluetooth. While I did manage to get connected over Wi-Fi, it seemed to have issues roaming between my access points, so I just used Bluetooth for ease of use. That's probably the fault of my Wi-Fi infrastructure rather than a Ugreen problem, so I won't ding it for that but you will need the app if you want to enable U-Turbo mode. And it's also nice to see granular output stats for every single USB port, very cool. As well as being able to toggle the lighting feature on or off directly from the app. Uh, by the way, it has a light. I didn't mention that. One button on the interface, you can cycle through four different modes, low, high, standard flashing, and an SOS mode. The app offers everything I would want from a portable battery app in a clean and easy to understand interface. Right, let's talk about the SC200 uh, foldable solar panels because these are without doubt the best solar portable panels I've come across yet, but with one annoying caveat that they provide the wrong cables. I'll explain in a moment. So first up, from a design point of view, these are briefcase style panels with a built-in solid plastic handle. It's very convenient. I have other 200 watt panels that have a separate bag to carry it in. They are so annoying. So yes, I love the design of these. One other really neat feature I want to point out is the angle guide. And this is such a simple feature. I can't believe it hasn't been built into panels before now. I've never seen one of these, but basically it's a small piece of clear plastic with a dot in the middle. And then underneath that, there's a little cavity which the dot projects into. And there's a circle labeled in the center. It's a very simple concept, get the projected dot inside of that circle for maximum output, because that's where you'll be 90 degrees to the sun. Now I set up the panels as I always do and found that actually I was a bit out. And by tweaking the angle so it was perfectly lined up at the center, you know, I added another 10, 20 watts to the output from a single panel. So this is definitely a, a low cost addition for them to put in there, but it's incredibly useful and such a simple, neat feature. Love that. Another cool feature, which unfortunately may also be a source of confusion for some, is that the cabling isn't built in. Instead, you'll find an XT60 connector underneath this rubber port here. And I think this is an interesting design choice because it means you can use a straight through XT60 to XT60 uh, for ease of connection to the PowerOM 1200 and you can easily replace broken cabling unlike most panels which have the cabling built in. That's also something I've not seen before on a solar panel. So once I had optimized with the angle guide, I found the output from a single panel was outstanding with a maximum 150 watts during our springtime morning sun. However, when I connected two of the panels in parallel, using the supplied Y adapter that came with the battery, I only got 250 watts rather than 300, which I would expect as double that of a single panel. So somewhere along the line, 50 watts is mysteriously disappearing. Now this is actually easy to explain if we look at the electrical specifications of the panels. The solar input on the battery is rated at 12 to 48 volts and 15 amps maximum. Each panel generates 16 volts and around 9 amps at the time of this test. By using the supplied parallel Y connector cable, we combine the current, which results in an input of 16 volts and 18 amps, which is above the maximum of 15 amps uh, by about 3 amps. And 3 times 16, well, that gives you the missing 50 watts. The overcurrent doesn't break the charging circuit, but it does ultimately limit the power we can make use of. So by using the cable provided, you're potentially wasting 50 watts or more. Instead, what you should be doing is combining voltages by using a series circuit. So one panel feeding into another, and then the positive from one panel and the negative from another going to the battery. Now, out of the box, this isn't possible. And when I mentioned this to you, Green, they said they would be providing another cable in the battery box uh, to help do it. Unfortunately, just including another cable wouldn't actually allow you to do it. And that's because of the next point. But I will briefly mention that this issue of uh, mysteriously disappearing power isn't a unique problem to you, Green. I've had the same problem with Jackery panels before. So while individually very efficient, collectively 
uh, they don't do so well and they tend to waste power unless you mess around with the cabling. So while ideally this would be made clearer in the manual and possible out of the box, it is of course always a good idea for you to know the power output of your panels, the open circuit voltage, the current, as well as the battery input ranges. Now it's okay to exceed the current, you'll just be limited, but generally not the voltage. That's more likely to blow something up, so you do need to be careful. Just remember that series wiring, where you go from one into another, one panel into another panel, will combine the voltage while keeping the same current, while Y cables or parallel adapters will combine the current and keep the same voltage, and that's probably something that everyone is more familiar with in terms of just splitting a cable up. Now also in the solar panel box they include an XT60 to MC4 connector and this is the more sort of traditional connector that you would expect to find on solar panels. Unfortunately the type of cable they provided is designed to go with a battery to allow MC4 input rather than turn a solar panel into MC4 output and that's due to the polarity of the plugs. It's generally accepted coming from a solar panel that the male side will be positive. So the sticky out bit should be red, while the black side should be female or have an innie bit. So as you can see on the battery side of things for charging this from another solar panel that has traditional MC4 connectors, this would be accurate. You would have the female negative side going on to this male connector and you would have the male positive side going into this connector. So that would work fine if this cable was supplied with this battery in order to use a different solar panel. However, this cable is provided with the solar panel in order to turn the XT60 connector on the panel into an MC4 plug and it is wrong. So in the grand scheme of things, this isn't a huge deal. If you understand solar wiring, you can always create some male-to-male -male and female-to-female -female adapters, and that would allow you to wire up two of these panels in series, along with another one of these cables to the battery to get the most efficient. But it would seem to indicate to me that Ugreen didn't fully understand what they were doing with the solar panel cabling, which is a little bit worrying. So, should you buy the Power Roam 1200 and or the SC200 panels from Ugreen? The Power Roam 1200 battery offers pretty much everything you could want, except a wireless Qi charger from a mid-size battery backup unit, including the ability to power appliances well above average for its size. It has a comprehensive display, 0% emergency mode, built-in lighting, and plenty of USB ports. It even has a smartphone app for some of the more complex configuration and remote monitoring, and at a rated 3000 cycles until 80% battery degradation, thanks to the lithium ion phosphate cells, you could use it every day, uh, full charge and discharge for around eight years before it would be degraded. Normally for those sort of features, I would expect a little bit of a premium over the standard dollar per watt hour price point for all that, but in this case, you can actually get it on sale until May 21st as a launch offer for $850. And if you use the code 05UG1200, you'll get another $50 off. That's a great deal, as I say, for a mid-size uh, portable battery. And if this is Ugreen's first entry, I really look forward to seeing what's coming next, because it will, by any standards, be amazing. And then, cabling issues aside, the SC200 panels are also superb in terms of efficiency, portability, and that nifty little angle guide feature. Love them. But be prepared to learn solar wiring if you want to get the absolute best performance from two of these and into this. And that is, by the way, the maximum you can plug into the battery. And to be honest, it's efficient. It'll get you charged in four to eight hours, depending, of course, on your conditions. At $450 each, they're in line with similar branded panels such as those from Bluetti, but there are cheaper unknown brand portable panels out there for as low as $250 for a 200 watt. I can't say if they would be as efficient or as good as these though. The only other foldable 200 watt I've tried is nowhere near as efficient as these are. So for me, these are definitely gonna be worth it. But as ever, you pay a premium for portability regardless. If you can get away with a 400 watt static panel on the roof of your camper van or cabin, wherever it is that you're gonna use this, 
you could buy something twice as powerful as one of the smaller portable panels uh, for the same price. Or you could buy two panels to put in different locations so you wouldn't have to carry it around. So do consider if you really need that portability. They're only really suitable for camping or for places where you can't uh, modify the structure in some way. All right, that's it from me. Expect quite a few battery reviews over the next couple of weeks and some exciting new products from EcoFlow I have for review. Uh, a portable cooler and heat pump. If you have any questions about the Ugreen PowerRoom 1200 or SC200 panels, as ever, hit me up in the comments. I'd really appreciate a like and consider subscribing for more reviews of the most essential gadgets and coolest tech from all of us over at makeuseof.com. Till next time.